Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Iridium here in New York City. A little over seven years ago, I introduced you to a musician that was getting ready to take the music world by storm. Trumpeter, composer, and band leader Maurice Brown has definitely done that. In fact, this gentleman has recorded and toured with the likes of De La Soul, P. Diddy, Wycliffe, as well as the great Roots, as well as Dr. Lonnie Liston Smith, just to name a few. As well as he won a Grammy in 2012 with the Tedeschi Trucks Band, in which he is the trumpeter as well as an arranger for the group. Tonight he's performing music on his latest Ropa Dope's record release, The Mood, in which this gentleman is playing some very organic as well as hip-hop as well as R&B and jazz. And tonight you're going to hear just a little bit of snips of it. Tonight we had a chance to sit down and break bread about this project. We talked about his role as a band leader as well as a composer and arranger, as well as talk about some of his blues roots growing up in his native Chicago. So sit back, relax, and enjoy highlights of Mr. Mo Better, Maurice Brown, performing music from his current Robodopes record release, The Mood, here at the Iridium, live here on the Pace Report, here in New York City.
You know, about seven years ago, we talked and we broke bread and the world was starting to introduce yourself to your music and your vision. What was that upstairs tonight on that band stage? Well, uh, today I think was uh, basically that vision that you're talking about coming to fruition. I basically been working a lot with my friends and developing a sound. And it's, it's way bigger than me or anybody on that stage, you know, it's like a, a collective energy that we're doing. And it just wrote some really good tunes that they uh, help bring to life and help showcase their talent, you know, it's like a spread love. That's the whole message that we're doing right now and coming together with unity in the scene. You see a lot of that happening on, um, on the other coast, so I was saying, yo, we, that we need to do the same thing on this coast, you know. East Coast, we can come together and show each other love and grow and build with each other. So I think that's the, the new wave that everybody's on right now. And also, I want to add one more piece that you have been doing, the producing part. Now that is another element within itself to the music that you're writing. That is true. It helps me see the big picture, I guess, uh, if you will. A little quicker when you're producing it too because when I'm composing music and when I'm sitting ready getting ready to come produce it I already hear what it's gonna end the end result I already know what it's gonna sound like you know so I'm basically just fine-tuning everything to be as close to that vision I hear in my head already it's pretty awesome yeah. tell me about how this project came together because this is diametrically different than the last project you came out yeah well with this project the mood uh, the last album was more of a, like, the, the cycle of love, the, that was more of a concept album, you know, so I was taking people through the different stages, you know, to go through love. But with the mood, I really wanted to try to more capture a time. In my mind, I thought, you know, making this album and have all these things that, is, that are happening around in the world and the environment, that are influencing me right now. It's such a a unique time to be alive right now. And to be able to document it in this kind of way, for me, is a, a great accomplishment. Come a long way from Chicago. You know, this is, this is interesting because this album, you have some very dynamic musicians. You got Joe Blacks, you got Talib, who makes a guest appearance on this. You got Chris Bowers, you got Chelsea. You and Chelsea's relationship has gone back since the beginning of all of this. Yeah. Yeah, we've been playing together now for I guess probably eight years now, almost nine, almost a decade. <laughs> Sneaks up on you, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. She it's been great watching her grow too. Like uh, so I remember when I first started performing with her, I liked her sound and her energy. Well, I knew she had needed some more tuning, some fine tuning. She's definitely grown into like a monster player. It's great to, just to see that, you know? You know, I have to ask you this. this you, you have been embodied in the recording industry for over a decade now. And a lot of musicians would dream about the opportunities that you've had. Tell the viewers out here how you've been able to segue from being a band leader to accompanying other artists as well as arranging for people because we're going to go into that in just a sec well it's been uh it's been cool like i think all my opportunities pretty much stem from the trumpet at first because people they hear me and they want me to either play with them or horn arrange with them but once they find out that uh you know i film score and produce and all this other stuff that's when more doors open up and it's been uh really cool to see how many new artists that are out here and older artists that are just open to collaborations, you know, and wanting to do something different. They want to get out of the, the norm and 
and raise the bar. So I just try to come in and and offer my assistance to them and live up to my name, you know, try, try to make it more better if I can, you know. Can we talk about your relationship with uh, the Tedeschi Trucks Band? Because you got a Grammy and you've been with them for a, a bit too. Yeah. How did that collaboration come in together? And I want to also add a caveat about Derek. Derek is bringing a very unique voice to the idiom of not just rock music, but to the element of blues music. Yeah. Well, yeah, Derek Trucks, man, it's been a, a great experience like performing with him. I was with Tedeschi Trucks for like five years now so the goal of taking a, a break from them and doing my own thing that was a, a, a huge leap but uh, after five years of doing it I was like you know what this band is never gonna stop so <laughs> I, was like, I was like if you're gonna do your thing you're like you better go back to doing it right now or else you're gonna be stuck here forever which was would have been fine too because I love them. They're my family. I learned so much playing the Tedeschi Trucks band and also just like you said about Derek being such an incredible musician and soloist he approaches the music from a vocal standpoint you know so you can hear him singing on the guitar which is pretty cool and I think that's influenced me a lot too because I, he's listening to you know Mahalia Jackson and Aretha Franklin you know and literally like catching the vibratos and all the little things that make it special, doing this on the guitar, which is uh, brings it to life, man. And the way he has control over that big band, and I know I just learned so much like with Tedeschi Trucks, man. Like as far as like being able to to control the energy on stage and then give it to the crowd and come back, it's like surfing, you know, like riding a bull or something. You know, you gotta have it. And Derek's one of the masters at that, that's for sure. I bet it had to be a very unique experience for you playing stadiums and arenas. I mean, it just, it opened you up to a whole new world musically, didn't it? It did, you know, I was, I did some arenas touring before, but not as consistent as with like, you know, Tedeschi Trucks, they were just like non-stop. We were like at Red Rocks and just like, they would sell that Red Rocks like three, four times and something like that. It was, pretty insane uh, the one thing about that band too is that I think that helped a lot in the industry like people knew that I was with Tedeschi Trucks so a lot of doors would open up like uh, with Herbie Hancock like I first met him through Tedeschi Trucks when working doing stuff in the studio I recently was playing with Robert Glassman Herbie for the fundraiser they did for the victims of uh, Houston so like it all comes back around in a circle, you know, when you start meeting people in the industry and especially people that you look up to and admire, like people like Herbie and 
you know, just like one of your Chicago homeboys. Chicago ham homeboy, that's right. And Marcus Miller, you know, like I went out, I on his one of his records, Renaissance, and I went and toured with him for a few months in Europe. That was amazing. Like this, these are the kind of things that you know that open you up. I think as a musician, people sometimes you're so busy just doing that you don't you forget to enjoy the ride and actually just say, wait, I actually done some things here. And, should be proud of it. Take a moment to pat yourself on the back and breathe it all in. You suck it all in because it's important. Your uncle was famous blues musician, Chicago. And that was pretty much the beginning of you also when you started playing trumpet too. How did the blues come full circle to you now? Because I mean, you're just going back on home. Yeah, well, with the blues right now, <clears throat> it's like, the first thing I ever played was blues before I played jazz. So <laughs> I was playing by ear, playing blues with my uncle, like you said, in the blues clubs when I was like 15, 16 years old, you know? <laughs> so I think the blues is, has me in touch with all my natural instincts. So whenever I play something, I feel like it, it comes out really uh, honest and that I can attribute to my time of learning how to play the blues with my uncle and playing in Chicago and just learning so much from them guys, man. Like, uh, just being open. You really can learn from anybody. That's one thing that I think people don't, don't always realize. You can learn from anybody. Even if you're better than the other people around, you can still learn from them. That one guy might be doing one thing you're not doing, you know? So I've really been um, trying to to stay open to the oneness of me and everything around me, just to be able to uh, to add what I need to do in the right situations. Because I realize I'm just a vessel, channeling energy. <laughs>
one of the things I really admire about what you have been doing is hip hop is of my generation and your generation. And you have definitely kept that honest in trying not only to bring music of our generation to our generation, but also the people who have never listened to hip hop coming into jazz. How easy and how hard is